And that's one of the reasons why our scholarship, I keep, even before you start, I, you know, some of us then when they, when they come to us, they're like, well, when are we going to start the application? But the first is we need to articulate your why. Yes. And I wanted to ask, you know, I wanted you to like, you know, share your thoughts on how you've been able to find your why, like sort of helped you so much in the application process and even during your program itself. Yeah. Hmm. Dr. And that's a big question because finding why, you see that question, why do you want to do this? Or mm -hmm. what are you doing in the next two years? It is a very difficult question to answer, yeah. right? It takes a long time to find what your why, and the truth is your why can change a little bit. If not mm -hmm. entirely, it could change. So hmm, how did I find my why? I think you find your why by doing. Like mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. your skill. So 2019, I was not sure what I wanted to do. I knew I love talking. I knew I love teaching. I knew, like, what is that? What, what do I want to do? Who am I? I remember my friend asking me, I'm actually, who are you? I'm like, I don't know who I am. It was, 2019 was horrible. It was a moment of growth. And you know, growth can be painful as well. Mm -hmm, I remember mm -hmm. crying, like, who am I? What do I want to do? Because I finished school 2018. So it's a lot yeah. of questioning, right? So I started doing, I joined the Young Innovation Leaders Fellowship. I was mm -hmm. paired with people to do the project in, on education. I'm like, okay, maybe education is my thing. I uh, I told you again, I wrote, I said, um, I started teaching. And mm -hmm. I was, I don't know if I was passionate about teaching, but I, I knew I loved teaching. I knew I loved my class. That anytime I go to class, I feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I knew that I do not like the current education system. And I want to, I don't know if I want to challenge it, but I felt like I should challenge it by doing things differently as don't a like teacher. Don't like the state of school. I like it. No. <laughs> I, hate, I just don't like it and uh, I, as as a teacher teaching assistant at that, at that point i was like what can i do different so that when my student go out there they say okay miss jennifer they call me miss jennifer miss jennifer is different miss jennifer taught me this right mm -hmm. and so i started doing things i took on leadership position uh, with the nysa and that way i figured out what i want to do yeah once it's education yes i want to improve learning Mm. And so I started taking courses and then technology came into play because with, with COVID came Zoom. And That's so right. I started thinking, okay, education technology, what is it about education technology? <laughs> you yeah. know? And That's then I started right. like narrow, narrowing it down to educational leadership. So yeah. if it's educational leadership, it's, so the, I think the whole, the course is educational leadership, but the vision is bringing change to education. Mm. And the other thing is, how can I lead change in education, even as a teacher? even as a program design or project design or whoever you are, how can I lead change in education mm -hmm. for development of youth and for African development as well? And so that's how I narrowed it down. So I feel like finding purpose, yes, there's a place for reflection, but there's also a, there's, there's also a place of doing it. You have to go out there and yeah. get your hands dirty, right? So I hope I answered your question, but that's... No, no, you absolutely, absolutely, you did. Um, and I think that at the end of the day, once you're able to articulate your why, um, mm -hmm. the application process becomes a lot easier because mm -hmm. your point is just being able to, like, you know, express that why, you know, to the review committee, and from you know, from there they can make a decision. The other thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, I know that there are some doubters out there, regardless of whatever that are like, oh, am I sure that scholarship IQ is gonna work for me? Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's important to take some time just like, you know, address those doubters. And, you know, is are there any things, are there things in particular you want to say to like sort of, I don't want to say convince, I really don't think you need to, I don't think we need to convince anybody. You, yeah. you, once you've seen the, you know, the track record, you just say, okay, I want to do that, you don't want to do it. But what are some of the things that, you know, I know you already, you touched on it earlier about the mentorship and other board. Yeah. I just want to sort of like, you know, address those that they are doubting, like, is this going to work for me? It's not going to work for me. And what would you speak to that? I was going to say have faith <laughs> <laughs> like have faith but, like I said earlier the first step even before scholarship IQ is for you to be determined like mm. go mm. through the journey scholarship IQ will not apply for this scholarship for you they're not mm. going to write your essays for you they're going to support your journey and mm. so as an individual make that decision and secondly, with scholarship, now back to once you've decided, and then going back to connecting with people and connecting with scholarship IQ, I would say it is hard to find people who are committed because mm. people will be like, oh, it doesn't concern me, it's not my journey. But with scholarship IQ, these are people who are committed, who are genuine, that they want to help you go through this journey, they want to help you review your essay, they 
they want to help you find this scholarship. And so yeah. what you have to do is to sit down with your reflection, write and send to them. Mm. And so if there is anything, when you're thinking about working with scholarship, like if there's anything that, that, you, that should be at the back of your mind is, these are people that are committed to my journey. Mm. These are people mm. who want to see me win, yeah. right? Don't find, it's, this is not something you pick on the street. Mm. It's mm. rare, even during, because everyone has their own cross to carry. And yeah. sometimes people are just running their own race. They're like, you know what? Don't stress me. I don't owe you anything. <laughs> But with these people, you find commitment. I think mm. that's one word, commitment. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I would say, commitment. Yeah. No, and no, no. One the, yeah. Sorry, one of the benefits, I, I was thinking, when I was thinking about us, this talk, mm -hmm. I remember that your mentor can actually be your referee. Yeah, and depending on the kind of relationship you build with them, yeah. because now they've known you. They've, mm -hmm. It's as if they've gone through your journey with you because you're, you guys are doing it together you're sharing all these experiences together mm -hmm. they know you and they can come in as a referee but anyway again it, <laughs> it depends <laughs> um yeah and, and and i think that it also speaks to the idea of building a relationship on the long term